Good morning, everyone. Lord, teach us to pray. How do we pray? What do we pray for and why do we pray? When do we pray? When I think about praying, it conjures up so many images for me and probably also for you. Most of us have grown up surrounded by prayer in one form or another. Prayer is powerful, it is intimate, and it changes the hearts of those who pray regularly by drawing us closer to God. There are many types of prayers, and we find evidence of this in the Bible. Some prayers may be motivated by a need for healing, for help, or even for a grateful heart. Our prayers are a result of considering and declaring the grandiosity of God. Whatever the kind of prayer we bring to God, though, what's most important is that we make it a priority because it is how we connect with God and develop a personal relationship with him. Today's Psalm 138 is a clear prayer of praise and adoration for the God who answers our prayers. On the day I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. The psalmist goes on to tell us that even in the midst of trouble, God has stretched out his hand to preserve him. And most importantly, the psalmist reminds us that God's love is steadfast. It is steady. We can always count on God's love for all that. We praise and thank God. So why do we pray? Probably for as many reasons as there are prayers, but in today's gospel, Jesus, at the urging of his disciples, has given us a model of prayer that teaches us how to pray like Jesus by not only giving us words to say, but by leading us into a rich and meaningful way of both talking as well as listening to our Lord. So how did we learn to pray? I remember when I was growing up, there were several little prayers that were part of our family routine. One was saying grace when eight of us sat down to dinner. And as you can imagine, getting eight of us all at the dinner table at the same time was a real challenge for my parents. But when we were finally there and the food was cold, uh, we would pray, God is great, God is good. Now we thank him for our food. By his hand we all are fed. Thank you, God, for daily bread. Amen. Our bedtime prayer always seemed a little scary to me, but we prayed it faithfully, even though I was confused and didn't fully understand what it meant. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I certainly didn't want to go to sleep thinking about dying. And I always kept this special nightlight on because I just needed to be sure that I was okay, that my sister and I were still breathing. My dad now, who is a preacher's son, Baptist preacher's son, would often be seen with his eyes closed in his special prayer chair. But I always thought that my mother's prayer time was when she played the organ at church. After she died and I received her Bible, however, I discovered that she had marked many, many pages, underlined and highlighted, probably could take on Father John for competition for the underlining and the highlighting and notes everywhere in the book. I was so surprised and I discovered that she prayed the scriptures. Music became a form of prayer from for me, from, from my earliest childhood, when I learned songs at church and vacation Bible school, we sang and prayed with our whole body. And those songs and prayers are part of my soul. You know the songs. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And then the children's favorite. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. 
but he is strong. And then, I, 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 th this one is a, a real favorite of mine. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And finally, I know there's somebody out there that knows this butterfly song, but I love it. It was one of my favorites, and it goes like this. If I were a butterfly, I'd thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could sing. And if I were a fish in a sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, you know, I, it, those are all in my heart. But as we grow older, some of us lose the precious innocence of childhood. And it is precious. And we become so much more self-conscious about prayer. We know it's an important part of our lives as Christians, but we're afraid of praying aloud. Maybe saying the wrong words, sounding foolish, or perhaps not even making any sense at all. But Jesus keeps it simple. I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Ask, seek, knock. Our persistence in prayer has the potential to be transformative. In today's gospel, the disciples became aware of a behavior in Jesus that, had n that he had not yet taken the time to teach them. It seems rather odd that something that was so important to our Lord um, had not been formally discussed with those who already in Luke 9 he had sent out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. His disciples were clearly given authority to teach, preach, and heal. But up to this point, Jesus had not discussed where prayer fit into that picture. In Luke's gospel, we find Jesus praying more frequently than any of the other gospels. He prays at his baptism. He prays before choosing his 12 disciples, before his per the first prediction of his passion, at the transfiguration, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Just imagine that prayer. And Jesus, in Luke, as you know, is walking toward Jerusalem, his face set toward Jerusalem. His simple act of walking to Jerusalem is a prayer. Prayer is important to Jesus. It guides his every action. It's part of who he is. And if it's important to Jesus, then it will be important to us. So finally, the disciples ask, Lord, teach us to pray. And the educators among us know that a good teacher will seize a teachable moment because the student is now ready to learn. The disciples have seen something in Jesus that made them curious, desiring something deeper and more meaningful than what they already had been in the habit of practicing. Jesus prayed all the time, and the disciples needed to know how to do that themselves. In reality, they may not have actually been looking for the key phrases that Jesus provided. The intensity and frequency of Jesus' prayer time was so powerful that what they want, they just wanted what he had. To be able to experience that intimacy in prayer, to turn their lives into an extended act of prayer, and to have a deeper relationship with the God Jesus loved. Yet, because of the formula of the Lord's Prayer, it has become a way to pray without ceasing, like breathing. It has the power to bypass our brains and rest into our hearts. Indeed, this template for prayer has become a prayer written on the human heart for over 2,000 years. As I said, like breathing, it sustains us and it keeps us alive. And when we say it together during the Eucharist, or if we sing it during our Eucharist, together we are communally transported into Christ's presence, his body nourishing us individually and corporately. When my Uncle Bob had a serious stroke several years ago, he could not speak to us intelligibly. But there were many things, two things in particular, he could do with conviction and precision. 
he could sing almost every song in his hymnal um, in multiple parts. And he could recite the Lord's Prayer. That prayer was written on his D, in his DNA. The purpose of prayer is to be in harmony with God and to have a sense of God's presence. To feel the assurance that God is in, around, and greater than any circumstance. Come what may, we belong to God. We are held in his everlasting arms. Prayer is a line of communication that opens the door to an intimate relationship with our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. It's our soul's deepest and most sincere desire, whether we speak it or we leave it unexpressed. Most likely, Jesus did not expect this prayer would be recited verbatim by Christians around the world for so many centuries. His purpose was not necessarily to teach specific words, although they are powerful and they do guide us, but rather to show us a way to pray and what to pray for. Often, many of us get stranded in the middle of a prayer as we focus on finding just the right words. We stumble and stutter and then promise ourselves, I'll never pray aloud in a group again. We become embarrassed and judgmental about our ability to pray. And those circumstances, I believe we've missed the point that Jesus is trying to convey in today's message. It's not the content of the prayer that's the key. Jesus is much more interested in our desire to pray without ceasing, to stay in the present moment, connected to the Father, who alone gives us good things. I dare say that most who are listening to the words of our hearts are not judging us, but rather feel compassion and thankfulness for the vulnerability that we share. Now, some of you in this room may remember Paul Harvey, we're going back a few years, but Paul Harvey had a show. It was a wonderful radio st show called The Rest of the Story. Once he told of a three-year-old boy who I'll name Johnny, who went grocery shopping with his mother. Mom gave him explicit instructions before they entered the store. You will not be getting any cookies, so don't ask. Well... I'm sure you know where this story is going if you have a three-year-old in your world. So up and down the aisles they went, not a peep out of little Johnny. But as they headed down that cookie aisle, the temptation was more than he could handle. Mom, can I have some chocolate chip cookies? Of course, Mom said, I told you before we got into the store that you couldn't have any chocolate chip cookies, so sit down and be quiet. Well, a mom shopping with a three-year-old is easily distracted, and she found herself once again having to go down that cookie aisle. And our little Johnny couldn't contain himself. Can I have some chocolate chip cookies, please? And mom, again, in a slightly raised voice now, said, I told you not to ask. You cannot have any cookies. So finally, arriving at the checkout, Johnny began to lose hope. So he stood up in his seat and he shouted in his loudest voice, In the name of Jesus, may I have some chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> Everyone in the checkout laughed and applauded. And do you think that boy got his cookies? You bet. He and his mother walked out of that store with 23 boxes of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> How generous. <laughs> Prayer is answered. The model prayer that Jesus gave was all about bread for this day. We don't need to store up 23 loaves of bread. Bread for this day. Forgiveness so we can be reconciled with our neighbor and with God. An avoidance of temptation. Poor little Johnny. But today we hear a parable about a persistent neighbor whose audacity to keep asking will eventually get him what he needs. Jesus wants us to learn that prayer should be like knocking on your neighbor's door in the middle of the night, demanding loaves of bread. Prayer is meant to be bold, persistent, and possibly even a little uncomfortable. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. Persistence matters. There may be times, however, when it doesn't seem like God is responding in the way we hope. It's often difficult to see the big picture, but God's nature is to offer an answer to our prayers that is best for us, even if that answer 
confuses or disappoints us. And it's my belief that God always answers prayers. And now, for the surprise ending, God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for it. Well, so where did this come from? The model prayer didn't mention the Holy Spirit. But maybe the answer is that in all our praying, in all our asking, begging, and pleading with God, what we're finally asking for and what we will in the end receive is nothing less than the indwelling of the Spirit of the living God. We pray in the power of the Spirit, who is our sacred companion, that brings us into the fullness of Jesus in our hearts. When we pray in the power of the Spirit, we find that same spirit alive in us, ready to assure us that no matter what happens, we serve a loving God who holds us tenderly every moment of our lives. Now that is good news. Jesus tells the disciples that it was the Holy Spirit they were seeking all along. This may not be an easy truth to swallow when your prayer for healing goes unanswered. And it is challenging to feel thankful when we experience disappointment or abandonment, and especially loss. But if God always gives the Holy Spirit to those who pray, then even when we believe our prayer is not answered, God provides a deeper answer after all. This may not always feel acceptable, but let each of us try to remember that God is not less because the answer we were looking for did not come. The gentleness of the Holy Spirit is a reassurance of hope. So today's gospel invites us to reflect on our prayer life. From where have we come? Perhaps it became with a simple arrow prayer to God. Help! Or we find ourselves growing into a more contemplative form of prayer. Wherever we are on our journey, let us be thankful for all those who put us on the path of prayer as an essential part of our life. We continue to ask our Lord to teach us to pray, calling on God as our parent and protector. We can take comfort from knowing that even when our words do not come, the Holy Spirit is present to help us in our weakness with sighs too deep for words. And if you know this prayer, please join me. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able.